It's a bit like performing open heart surgery on a living patient. You can't just stop the blood flow, or in this case, traffic flow entirely. You have to work carefully rerouting traffic like a bloodstream around the work zone, doing things in steps. Or think of it as, as remodeling your kitchen while trying to cook dinner each day. You might set up a temporary kitchen in another room, move appliances around, and do the renovation in phases so you're never completely without a stove or sink. It's doable, but it makes the project take longer uh, than if you just could close the kitchen entirely. So similarly, building a new interchange often involves staging. Maybe first they build a part of the new bridge next to the old one while traffic stays on the old bridge, then shift traffic on the new part to demolish the old bridge and build the remaining part and so on. Each stage is like a mini project. Safety considerations also play a role. The contractor has to ensure worker safety and driver safety. So setting up proper barriers, signage, and sometimes proceeding more slowly is necessary. Caltrans requires strict safety and traffic control measures in construction zones. They even sometimes offer incentives to contractors to finish certain milestones faster. For example, minimize how long a ramp is closed, but there are limits because rushing can compromise safety. Another reason construction can be prolonged is unforeseen challenges. No matter how thorough the design, reality can throw curveballs. You can have unexpected utility lines or old underground structures that might be encountered requiring redesign on the fly. Weather can cause delays. Heavy rain can disrupt, disrupt grading work, extreme heat can affect paving schedules, things like that. You're also building complex structures and those require multiple steps, fabricating beams, pouring concrete, letting the concrete cure, which can typically needs time to reach strength, often 28 days for full strength, then do the next part. So even if nothing goes wrong, there are still built-in weights. If part of the interchange is built on soft soil, they may have to preload the soil and wait months for it to settle to avoid future settlement. This happens on some projects, and we won't know that until those tests are done in the field. And on a job this size, there are many subcontractors and moving parts to coordinate. Iron workers for rebar, electricians for signals, paving crews, etc. Coordination and sequencing is an art. For context, if construction for Cherry Valley Interchange starts, let's say hypothetically in 2026, you may not see completion until about 2028. The exact schedule will be set when we go out to bid, but typically these interchange replacements aren't done in a single year. During construction, communication with the public also ramps up. You'll see message boards warning of upcoming closures or detour notices. Agencies nowadays often have websites or social media updates for big projects 